Are we live? That's correct. Okay. Hey, good evening and welcome to the November 4th meeting of the Capitola Planning Commission. Um, once again, we're meeting through Zoom and uh, hopefully one of these days we'll be meeting live again. So there are several ways that you can join in the meeting. Uh, you can watch it live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8, and tonight our technician is Kingston. But uh, you can also uh, join the meeting via Zoom, and if we can have that screen up, Sean, please. There we go. So you can see there's various ways you can join the meeting, and I know we do have people tonight that are wishing to comment on some of the items on the agenda. So those are the ways you can do it. So with that, uh, Chloe, may with a roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner Christensen. Aye, here. Thank you. Commissioner Newman. Here. Commissioner Westman. Here. Commissioner Wilk. Here. And Chair Ruth. Here. Thank you. And now if everyone will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to Thank the flag you. Of, of the United, United States, States of, America. of America and, and to the Republic which stands and the nation, a nation and under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice all. for all. <laughs> okay, that brings us to the second item on the agenda tonight, which is oral communication. Uh, Katie, do we have any additions or deletions to the agenda? No additions or deletions to the agenda. All righty. Okay, this is the time for any public comments for items that are not on the agenda. So if you wish to address the commission for some other reason uh, besides what's on the agenda, now would be the time to do it. So we'll give you a, a little bit of time to join the meeting to comment on some item that's not on the agenda. I'm not seeing any public comment in our um, inbox. Okay, then we'll move on to item C, which is commission comments. Are there any uh, comments from the commissioner? Uh, I have one, this is Susan. Susan? Uh, since we have Chloe with us tonight, I just wanted to thank her for the sort of bi-weekly newsletter she puts out on an email to all of us. Oh. Um, I think it's very well done and it's nice to hear about what's going on in the community. So I think that's a real asset and I enjoy it. Thank you so much. Yeah, ditto for that. Thank you, Chloe. Any other commission comments? Hearing none, then we'll bring it to the staff. Any staff comments, Katie, Sean? Um, no staff comments. No, for additions and deletions, I should have mentioned that we have had a few last minute public comment come in this evening. Um, for one for 115 Saxon and two items for the outdoor dining. And those have those made it to the planning commission in time and they've had time to review those comments. Okay. Thank you, Katie. So now we're to the approval of the minutes. We have the uh, minutes from two previous meetings tonight to approve. The first is the minutes from August 19th of 2021. We have a motion to approve or make corrections. I move to approve. This is Commissioner Wilk. I'll second it, Commissioner Westman. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the meetings from uh, the minutes from August 19th. May I have the roll call, please, Chloe? Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. Chair Wilk, uh, excuse me, Chair Ruth. Aye. Thank you. That will be it in another month, Chloe. <laughs> item, item B is uh, the Planning Commission minutes from September 2nd of 2021. Is there a motion to approve those minutes or any additions or corrections? I move approval. This is Commissioner Wilk. I'll 
second it. This is Commissioner Westman. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve those minutes from September 2nd. The roll call, call please, Chloe. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. Chair Ruth. Aye. Okay, the motion carries, those minutes are approved. That brings us to item four of the consent calendar. We do have a request tonight to pull the only item on the consent calendar off for public discussion. That would be item A, 115 Saxon Avenue. So with the consent of the commission, we'll pull that off for public discussion. Any objections? Okay, hearing none. Uh, this is a design permit to convert a roof to second story deck uh, on a single family residence located on Saxon Avenue in the R1 zoning district. Uh, we have a presentation, Sean. Yes, thank you. Good evening, commissioners, Chair Ruth. The application before you is a proposal to convert a flat roof into a second story deck on a single family non-conforming residence located at 115 Saxon Avenue. The proposed second story deck is located on the side of the property adjacent other residential uses, which requires planning commission approval through a design permit. The existing two-story residence, as it appears today, surrounded by one and two-story single-family homes in the Depot Hill neighborhood. The existing structure is not conforming because it encroaches the rear and side required setbacks. An aerial of the site with the adjacent 117 Saxon Avenue. Uh, the applicant is proposing exterior modifications to the second story, including a parapet glass wall extension and new doorway to allow the flat roof to function as a second story deck. The deck is approximately 342 square feet. Under the zoning code update that went into effect earlier this year, covered and uncovered exterior spaces such as decks, porches, and balconies do not count towards the total floor area calculation. So that 342 is, is uh, not included in the FAR. The deck area shaded in blue above is closest to two single family residences, which are both located on the property at 117 Saxon Avenue. Design criteria F requires that the city consider and minimize privacy impacts of adjacent properties with building permit features such as entrance doors, entrances, doors, and decks. In considering the adjacent residences, the applicant has proposed constructing an 18 inch tall privacy glass feature on top of an existing 42 inch tall wall facing the rear and side property lines. They would be built uh, on that orange line seen here. The existing first story structure is set back four feet from the side property line, which complies with the first story setback. To comply with the six foot setback that applies to upper stories, the applicant has proposed construction of an inset railing two feet from the existing parapet wall. The blue line represents that, that setback for the, the new railing and there's an example that the applicant provided, uh, which would not be visible from the street or from the adjacent residence. are the existing and proposed elevations. The proposed project will have limited visual impact on the existing appearance of the residence, except for the privacy glass extension and the new deck doorway. With that, staff recommends the Planning Commission approve the project based on conditions of approval and findings. Okay, thank you, Sean. Are there any questions for staff before we open this up to the public? I have a question. Uh, this is Commissioner Wilk. So I read that the uh, second story complies with the six foot setback requirement, even though there's a uh, non-compliance on the first story. Is that correct? The, 
Uh, it's interesting, the, uh, the, the first story does comply with the first story setbacks of four feet on the side. And the second story, if it were functioning as a deck all the way out for the full uh, lot coverage or the structure's coverage, it would be within that six feet, which is why the applicant has that railing set two feet in. The non-visible railing. Right. Uh, and is there a is there a 10% side yard or 1715 110 e requires the 10% is that is that what's non-compliant? Um, the first story setback for the side is 10% of lot width, which in this case would be four feet from a total lot width of 40 feet. So I thought you said the side yard setback was non-compliant. Did I miss something? That that would be on the opposing property side. Oh my, okay. Got it, thank you. Any other questions for staff before we open it up? Okay, hearing none, we will open this up for public comments. I believe we've had a communication from uh, Mr. Schink at uh, adjacent property on El Salto. So if there's someone wishing to speak, now's the time, raise your hand, let, let us know that you're there, please. We do have a public comment request and it is from Mr. John Shank. So I'm gonna- Okay, Mr. Shank, go ahead. Wonderful, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. And um, I, I did submit kind of a detailed memo. I'm hoping you have a chance to peek at it. I think, you know, just to summarize, our main issue is that this structure, in, as Mr. Wilk was asking, you know, on the setback and conforming or not conforming, this, this wall, which is a, a first floor element, and I would call it a, a four foot parapet wall on the second floor, is where I look at the second floor component as being second floor. I mean, this is gonna be a second floor roof deck. And that second floor is four feet. It's not set back the extra two feet, the extra 50%. It's all at the four foot level. And by act, if this were to happen and activating this large roof deck on the side yard at the midpoint of the side yard, it puts it squarely right in our backyard uh, in four feet away. And, I, and it's, it's that issue that I think just makes this inappropriate. Um, I did go back and, and read a bunch of the notes and comments and staff reports to council during the many years of, of discussion on the zoning change here. And it's, it was really clear that the side yard was the where they had concerns about re, uh, relieving the uh, un uncovered deck from being counted as FAR. The front seemed almost like it would be fine, et cetera, which is why we're at, a, at this review because it's a side yard. And in this circumstance, being right on the property line midpoint, it's, it's very intrusive. And I don't think that was the intent of allowing people to add a deck or a balcony and have it not included in the FAR. It's not supposed to have these kinds of impacts. I'm, I'm grateful that um, my neighbor, you know, uh, I'll say attempted to address it by adding a, um, a, a glass wall on top of this wall that's already too tall and too close to the property line. Um, and the, the, but I just, it's, it just makes it more impactful. It's more shadow, it's more glare, it's more structure right on the property line. And then as we can imagine, it becomes activated, right? A roof deck, balcony, you know, people are outside. You get, I would imagine, I would hope there'd be restrictions. There's nothing addressed in here, but I could, you know, I could imagine umbrellas and heaters and which are lights effectively, all these things literally, right up there on top of our kitchen and backyard. And again, I just don't believe, it's up to you guys to interpret obviously, but I didn't find anything that led me to believe this was the intent of this 
allowance for added structure. And there's a point made, I, I tried to add some comments to the, a few of the slides that were in the, um, in the packet here. But, you know, there's points that there's all these, you know, other second floor roof decks and balconies in the neighborhood. And there are many, but those obviously happened in the past compliant with code then, which meant the building wasn't as big. It wasn't maxed out on FAR. The overall impact was such that it was then permitted. And the vast majority are in the front yard or the backyard or face, you know, the impact is on the public street, not midpoint of a lot on top of somebody's backyard. And it's really, I think, you know, that's where I, and I look through and, you know, I'm not as technical as staff clearly, uh, who's, who's, you know, I, I, but I just looked at the, you know, the findings in these things and I thought, I don't know how you say this second floor wall is compliant with the R1 zoning because it's four feet from the, I mean, if it was a one story element the first time around, and this was a few years ago when I brought up this issue of its impact, just the structure and its impact on our property. And I was told that it's not a roof deck. It's not an anything. It is, it's just a, you know, it's a parapet wall and it, that's all that it is. Well, now it's a roof deck. So it's a second floor and a second floor. It's anyway, it's just, I, I don't know how we can say it's compliant with the zoning code because, well, I don't think that it is. And then all these words around not impactful or just, you know, all these things around design review is intended to obviously have a very subjective element, but be, it seems like the, all, how many times it says to, to be wary of not impacting neighbors and you guys can imagine sitting in your own, in your own backyards and then 15 feet in the air, four feet away on a house that's already maximized in terms of its FAR and has multiple other exceptions, you know, the setbacks on the back and no parking and those kinds of things, that this would just be yet another impact on us. And I love roof decks. I love being outdoors. I, all those things are, are wonderful. If this were on the front of the property, I would have no issues if it were on the back. Now, I don't want to put it on because if it was some other neighbor, but being midpoint of our lot on top of our private space, um, it's, it's too big of an impact to just say it's, it's not, you know, that it complies and all of these things, all these different findings. And so I, I, my thought was, you know, if this were to proceed, it would be, if I were you know, wanting to, if I were the, the, the applicant and wanting to do this, I would figure, I would, you know, I, I don't think it would be unreasonable to move that wall back, set it back to make it compliant with zoning. And then there's the consideration of, do we allow the roof deck there? And then there would be some conditions, whether it's, and I wouldn't do a clear glass because that doesn't help with the privacy component, mid, mid side yard, but maybe it's a frosted glass or it could be some other material or something to retain some private, my bedroom window is not far from this second floor uh, deck area. And then down below, as I say, is a kitchen on one side and the other side, it's a kitchen in the bathroom. And anyway, some to retain the privacy would be important. And then I do think thinking about whether it, you know, it's for this case, but for others, are, are there any restrictions on the use? Could you put, well, it's not covered, so it doesn't count as FAR, but could somebody put a big, you know, those big tent structures or big, huge umbrellas up there and a heater and light, you know, these umbrellas with lights on them or whatever it is, all these things that we're fearful of that would add to impacts. Um, and there don't seem to be any conditions there, nor are there, it, it sounds like there will be no decking or anything. It's just, they're going to have a roof deck literally on their roof. And that's great. If they're going to do it, typically people put down some, some sort of material, a decking or something, which then raises the height. And that would need to be taken into consideration from a privacy perspective for the height of um, any treatments 
that were that were added to the, the exterior edges. But again, I just think this structure is too close and right out of the chute. The second floor is already too close. And then to add to it by activating it and such, it's just too much. And I'm happy to answer questions or talk about other ideas about maybe how to move forward. But I, fundamentally, that's my that's my big issue. Okay, thank you, Mr. Shane. Yeah, now's the time to make your best case because typically we don't come back to allow people to engage in a dialogue with the with the commission once we uh, in the public portion. So, if uh, you've made your best case, now we're going to ask if there's any other public comments um, for people wishing to speak on this item. Sean, do we have any other hands raised? I do not see any other hands raised at this time. And there's no uh, new emails either. The owner is present, but I do not see their hand raised. Okay, well then we will bring it back to the commission for discussion and whatever action the commission chooses to take. Uh, who would care to lead off on this? I, I would, this is Commissioner Westland. I would be happy to start because I was involved when the project was originally approved. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, and I think perhaps Commissioner Newman was also uh, on the Planning Commission at the time that this came to us. And it was quite clearly indicated to the Commission at that time that this area was not going to be a deck and was never going to be a deck. In fact, the Planning Commission, I think, included a condition that they change the window that they now want to convert to a door so it would be obvious that um, uh, there wouldn't be any access to this outdoor space. And I understand that um, some of the regulations have now changed, and that's the reason they're coming back. Um, but for me to be able to vote in favor of it, um, I would almost ask that we continue this item for one month to see if the two neighbors can work out uh, some sort of agreement that works for both of them because um, uh, you know, it's hard for me to approve a second story deck like this that's clearly going to have such uh, impact on the neighbor next door. So um, I, I'd like to see them have some time to work it out rather than the Planning Commission try and design solutions for them uh, and then they could come back and I guess we could find solutions if they haven't been able to. So those are my comments. Thank you, Susan. Question for Commissioner Westman? Yes. Um, yeah, this is Commissioner Wilk. I, I was curious about the approval of the four-foot wall on the second story. Uh, when this came around the first time, was there any discussion as to why they would want to enclose the roof with a four-foot para parapet wall that wasn't compliant with a six-foot setback? Uh, they indicate my recollection is and i'm going back several years and perhaps the staff could look up the minutes but my recollection is that we were assured that that was just an architectural feature that they wanted to have because this area was never going to be used as a deck itself uh, and as i said we uh, we were uh, we voted on it on the basis that it would never be used as a deck and um, maybe Commissioner Newman remembers other things that I'm not remembering, but I believe we were both there. Thank you. Commissioner Newman, do you have any insight to add? Well, apparently the um, recusal uh, rules have changed because I'm told that I'm recused on this item now. So I oh. better uh, abide by that. Okay, thank you for that. Katie, do you have any, or not Katie, but uh, Courtney, I'm sorry, do you have anything to add? Courtney? 
Hi. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, I just wanted to see the aerial view of the adjacent property again. Um, I see. Okay. So I, I think my overall question is there, there, there isn't anything prohibiting them from having that second story deck. I mean the, the roof deck there. Sean or uh, Katie. Can you hear me? It, it requires um, a design permit. So. Right. Well, question, it sounds like it requires a variance because the wall is the second story parapet wall, the four foot wall is doesn't have the six foot setback. Now they try to uh, mollify that requirement by adding an, a, a railing that is invisible. And so hence could be ignored or taken down without anybody seeing, but effectively what has happened is they have this four foot, they have a second story wall that is not a decorative feature anymore. It is now a, uh, a roof deck wall that doesn't have a six foot setback. And I would be curious to know what the rationale from staff is for that. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I, I was I was out there today and looked at the looked at the site from both Saxon Avenue and El Salto. In fact, through Mr. Shink's backyard, and uh, actually I went across the street to get a on someone's front porch to get a higher uh, elevation so I could look and see. And it, it's definitely intrusive. I I just can't imagine that uh, that this is something that the commission would want to approve um, because it basically destroys the privacy, not only in Mr. Schenck's backyard, but the neighborhood also. I believe it's 205 El Salto. Uh, so, you know, my experience has been, I had one of these in my neighbor directly to my south, but he had a five and a half foot wall along his deck. And I know we've done that in at least one other case to protect privacy, uh, but in its current configuration, uh, I just, I can't support the way it is. So Katie, I know Mr. Wilkes uh, asked you a question. Uh, regarding the, the need for a variance, if you could respond to that. Yes. Um, so I, I was trying to go back to the 2017 approval, but um, I apologize. I don't have enough time to look it up. And, but I, I'm almost certain that it was uh, considered part of the roof, um, and that's why the roof to the first story, and that's why it was compliant at the four feet. If they had built a second story there, or if this had been designed as a deck, um, if they came in with a proposal today, we would have them, they'd be required to meet the six, you know, six foot setback. Um, in our review, we did think that by putting that divider an, an additional two feet in the fence, that that would bring this into compliance because they it would still be that roof element, but with the, the new wall, um, and maybe that's how we could deal with it instead of like a fence creating a second wall there. But um, that, that is how we were looking at it, that it wouldn't need a variance because that is part of the like, parapet, wall, parapet roof for the structure for the first story. And then by building that new wall, they're meeting the intent of the zoning code of not you know, having the second story deck within six feet of that property line. So that is why we didn't require a variance on this. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Commissioner Will? Well, it, it, uh, I guess it, it's a fine point, I guess. I mean, the uh, you're saying that the last two feet uh, complies with the original um, original agreement by the Planning Commission that, oh, it's a, it's a design feature only. Um, and, uh, and, and the deck now, because it has this fence, uh, is, is the only part we have to worry about. I just, to me, yeah, I, so I can see why you, you you know, agreed that it did need a variance, but man, I tell you, it sure seems like um, that's really playing games. So 
I don't know. I, it, this is a tough one for me. Yeah. Thank well, you. If, if I'm reading the, the commission right, it, it kind of sounds like if a vote were taken, it may fail. And Commissioner uh, Westman has suggested we continue this to see if the neighbors can work out an agreement. Uh, that's probably in the best interest of the property owner because it doesn't sound like he's going to get what he wants if we took a vote tonight. So what's the pleasure of the commission? Would you like to vote on it or would you like to continue it in hopes that the two property owners can reach an agreement? I would motion. Can I make a motion? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Courtney. I'd like to motion to, um, uh, based on Commissioner Westman's suggestion of continuing and I will second. Yeah, this yeah. is Commissioner Westman. I'll second it. Okay. All right. Any discussion on the motion before we call for the vote? Hearing none. Then Chloe, can we have the roll call, please? Yes. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. I'm saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Commissioner <laughs> Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. And Chair Ruth. Aye. So this item will be continued until staff brings it back to the commission. Okay, that brings us to our public hearings tonight. We have three of them tonight. Our first public hearing is 111 Capitola Avenue. Uh, this is the uh, English Ales House uh, requesting a change in their alcohol sales to include beer and wine. Katie, Sean? Yes, this is uh, my item this evening. Sean, I'll need you to um, allow me to share the screen or to turn off your screen so that I can share mine. Stop sharing. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. Uh, before you tonight is an application at 111 Capitola Avenue. This is an amendment to a conditional use permit for English Ale, um, who is located within the Mixed Use Village Zoning District. Are you seeing my screen okay? Yes. Okay. Um, English Ales Brewery received a conditional use permit back in December of 2019. Their CUP was very specific that it was for an alcohol sales type 23 small beer manufacturer license from the um, Department of Alcoholic uh, Beverage Control um, for on-site beer consumption, tasting, and sales. So with that permit, it's for English Ales is a brewery and they're allowed to have satellite brewery tasting rooms. So it was just for beer. Um, this One of the conditions on the permit that it was very specific in the approval limiting the establishment to that type 23 license. Um, and any modification to that license would have to come back to the Planning Commission for review. It was in that condition. So the current request before you this evening is to amend the CUP to modify the license to a type 42 beer and wine license. And this is so they can offer their guests um, a variety uh, rather than to offer wine in addition to beer. Um, when looking at a conditional use permit, the Planning Commission must consider characteristics of the proposed use, operating characteristics, um, if there's available and adequate public services and infrastructure, potential impacts to the natural environment, and the physical suitability of the site for the proposed use. Also, the Planning Commission has the ability to attach conditions um, to make sure that the application is consistent with the general plan, our local coastal program, as well as our zoning code and any specific plan. So in our review, this went before um, now Chief Daly, or almost soon to be Chief Daly. He was interim at the time. Um, and he reviewed this application and saw no new impacts 
um, regarding this proposal and provided a letter of support. And staff in our review also did not find any new impact from adding uh, wine to the allowed sales at 111 Capitola Avenue. So our recommendation this evening is for Planning Commission to approve the amendment to the CUP based on the conditions of approval and findings. With that, I'm available for questions. Thank you, Katie. Any questions? Oh. Commissioner Westman? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. I have a comment. Courtney? I just wanted to say that I really think that this, this little establishment in their business has been a really great contribution to that stretch of street. Thank you, Courtney. Okay, if there's no further comments, then we'll open up the public portion of this. Is there anyone in the public wishing to speak to this item? I believe the owner is on the meeting this evening. Um, Sean, maybe if you open it up for him to speak if you'd like to, I'm not sure if he... Okay. Mr. Blackwell, are you there? Um, and Sean, are you able to unmute him? Sean, are you unable able to unmute? Oh, sorry about that. My my mic was muted. Yes, I did just unmute. Uh, Mute him so he can unmute his own mic and, and speak if he wishes. I, I don't see his hand up, however. Okay, well, we'll continue then and bring it back to the commission oh. for act. It um, shows his mic muted actually on my screen. Yeah, mine too. Yeah, Peter, if you press your space bar, you should be able to, we should be able to hear you or press unmute. Uh, nothing seems to be happening, so let's continue. So bring it back to the commission. Uh, any concerns, questions for staff on this item? No. I have a, a general concern that just kind of popped in my mind. Um, you know, we we have a lot of uh, concerns about noise and uh, unruliness by the surrounding neighborhood, and, and yet we continue to uh, allow liquor licenses and more wineries and more bars inside the mercantile on now on Capitol Avenue. I'm just wondering, and I have no objection to this, but I'm just wondering, do we want to, will we continue to do that? Is that something we really want in terms of how our community is, and the village is growing? Um, it's kind of a random thought that just made me try to think if there's any reason why I would ever want to not approve this and that that would be a consideration but but no I don't have any objection to this uh, I, I actually have the same concerns and while I'm not going to vote against this particular application tonight um, you frozen. <laughs> yeah she froze up <laughs> Well, you know, you can't walk more than 200 feet in the village without stopping to have a drink at some place that's available. So we'll bring it back to the commission for a vote then. Is there a motion to approve or deny the application? I think we should allow Susan to finish her comments if she can get it back on It was my understanding that... There she is. Hey, Susan. Now, now you're muted. Okay. There you go. Anyway, I just would like to later on have staff sort of come back. To Susan, I would suggest uh, turning off your video and then you hopefully we'll be able to hear you. Sometimes that helps.
to us and tell us where we stand. Yeah, you you can just ignore me. It's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go find what's going on. I think I know the problem. <laughs> okay. Well, we hope you can you vote one way or like. another on this. Susan. So, is there a motion to approve or deny? We have a motion. I will so move. I move approval. Yes. Commissioner Wilk. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second then. Chloe, may the roll call, please. Commissioner Christensen. Now she's muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chloe, are you available for roll call? Hi, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't. I did not mute myself, so I don't know what happened. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. Commissioner Newman? Aye. Commissioner Westman, are you back? Aye. Great. I'm back. Great, thank you. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Chair Ruth? Aye. Great. Motion carries, and uh, the English Ale Tasting Room now be able to serve wine along with their beer. Mr. Blackwell, I see you have your hand up, but you got what you wanted, so we're going to be moving on to item B, 1500 Wharf Road. This is a, an application for a sign program on the walkways and gates at Venetian Court. Katie or Sean? Sean, um, you're muted. Thank you. The application for you is a master sign program for information and directional signage for the Venetian Court condominiums located at 1500 Wharf Road. The application includes a coastal development permit, uh, both of which require planning commission approval. The Venetian Court com comprises a group of separately owned condominiums located between Stockton Bridge and the Capitol Wharf. This is also the site of the Venetian Hotel, which is a separate entity uh, with its own signage. This is the site plan with the proposed and existing signs blown up for more visibility. Signage would be located along the seaward pathway and down the central passage. Triangles represent the existing gateway signs and circles represent the proposed freestanding sign. The seven in all. This is the proposed freestanding sign style. Four of these signs would be placed along the pathways. Each pathway sign would contain identical text and measures 18 inches wide by 18 inches tall. These are photos of the existing signs on the gateways. One sign is mounted on each of the three primary entrances. The proposed sign program specifies a maximum sign width and height of 18 inches. However, the existing gateway signs are 16 and a half inches uh, wide and tall. Nation Court pathways have been identified within the Capitol land use plan as providing beach public beach access. The implementation, oh, sorry. The implementation policy 11 for Venetian, the Venetian Court area directs the city to maintain existing public access along the pathways. The proposed signage includes specific language that identifies both private property as well as beach access. Further and future alterations to the number of signs or sign content would be subject to permit amendment by the Planning Commission. With that, 
staff recommends the Planning Commission approve the project based on conditions of approval and findings. Okay, thank you, Sean. Any questions for staff before we open it to the public? Hey, hearing none, now's the time for any member of the public to address this item, uh, proposed signs uh, prohibiting certain uses on the Venetian Court walkway and seawall. So now's the time to speak. We, we did receive um, an email on this, a letter. That I can put read aloud on if you can if, if you'd like. Yeah, could you please, Katie? Okay. Um, and Sean, if you don't mind, stop sharing your screen and I'll share. Okay. November 5th, 2021. City of Capitola Planning Commission, 420 Capitola Avenue, Capitola, California, 95010. Subject, 1500 Wharf Road, hashtag 21-0287 APN, Common Walkway C through H. Dear Planning Commissioners Nick Rouse, Courtney Christensen, Ed Newman, T.J. Welch, and Peter Wilk. I am writing to ask for your support and approval for the new signage requested for the Capitola Venetian Condominium. The new signage will provide benefits for the owners, public, and the city of Capitola by educating visitors who are unaware that these are private homes. I have listed the benefits to each of those groups below. Benefit to owners the number of visitors to the Venetian has increased dramatically in recent years as they have been highlighted on visitor maps, Google, and Twitter. Most visitors are respectful and polite, but a growing number are climbing and sitting on the beach houses to try and get a better photo than their friends or others who have posted previously on social media. Climbing on the beach homes causes the stucco ledges to crack causing water damage. Educating the public that these are private homes, not part of the hotel or city of Capitola, will help reduce some of this behavior. Benefit to public educating the public will give visitors the information they need to act appropriately when they are visiting the Venetian. Most people will behave appropriately if given adequate information. The goal in educating the public is to let them know that they are welcome to access the beach, but that these are private homes and to please respect the owners or renters using them. It will help avoid conflict with the owners and make everyone's time in Capitola more enjoyable. Benefit to City of Capitola social media is drawing a greater number of visitors to the Venetian and the Capitola village. In most cases, the owners politely ask those climbing on the homes, stairs, and even roofs of the Venetian homes to please respect their homes. Unfortunately, some visitors do not comply and still behave inappropriately. They believe this is public property and they can do as they please. This is when the police become involved, which takes up their valuable time and resources. With proper signage, we could at least point to the sign and show that although there is deep access, these are not public property and are privately owned. My Venetian beach house has been in my family for over 50 years, and I realize how fortunate I am to be able to own one. I grew up in Capitola and later graduated from Aptis High School. My wife and I live at our Venetian Beach House most of the time from September through May each year now. I am asking for your help in educating the public and, and visitors so that you can make our time and their time in Capitola more enjoyable. Sincerely, Michael Newell, 1500, Wharf Road Number 4, Capitola, California. Okay, so that, that was the one letter we received in the email. And I'm not seeing any hands raised. Uh, Craig Noons is available. Oh, his hand is raised. John, can you provide him access? Hello, can you all hear me? Yeah, Mr. Noons, go ahead. 
Great. Uh, hi, nice to uh, meet you all. Um, as uh, uh, Katie mentioned, my name is Craig Nunes. I'm here in my capacity as uh, the HOA uh, president for the Vacation Corps Residences. And um, I'm also a board member for the Capitola Village and Wharf Business Improvement Association. And uh, in fact, a couple of our other Venetian Court residents, Janelle Cox and Mike Gardner, are uh, on that board as well. In our BIA role, the importance of uh, bringing visitors to our merchants and dining establishments and hotels can't be understated. Um, however, the substantial increase in visitors to the village, um, that's had a kind of an unintended consequence on our Venetian court residences. And so the application before you aims at kind of coexistence of that continued growth of visitors to the village. It's good for our shop owners and uh, dining establishment owners, um, but uh, consider sort of the safety and security of our residents. The application uh, in front of you comes from uh, 22 homeowners in the Venetian court. Uh, and that was put together in partnership with the city of Capitola. Uh, and the California Post Commission. The reason we kind of took this sort of shared approach, I don't know if that's normal or not, but we felt it uh, a requirement, is uh, the Venetian Court Residences, they're a historic landmark, a central part of the city's identity. Um, the need for our joint relationship is particularly evident when you do an online search on Capitola, what you see on Google is not images of Capitola Beach or the Esplanade. Nine out of ten images are of our colorful homes. Um, the you know we are codependent uh, and inextricably bound to each other, and, and we think that's uh, you know a good thing. Um, and along those lines, we've partnered with the city planning department on the development of, of this application. Beyond the city of Capitola, we know that um, uh, because of our proximity. Uh, the uh, Coastal Commission, uh, they also have a, a really important objective to preserve public access for all California beaches, including our most favorite one in our backyard. And um, again, given our location, our residents, you know, kind of become ambassadors for, you know, this clean and safe beach. And, and we know we have an important stakeholder in the Coastal Commission. And, uh, you know, thanks to the help of the, the planning department, we're able to include them in the development of of this proposal. Um, I, I put together uh, kind of the challenges that we face as residents in uh, the, oh no. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Um, the, I, I put the challenges that we have kind of run into in a uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation in the materials. Um, a, a couple of points is, um, in 2020 and early part of 2021, there were 72 911 calls involving our address. And I can tell you from firsthand uh, experience that the majority of disturbances uh, from our residents go unreported, except occasionally to me, despite our encouragement to, uh, to do otherwise. We, we uh, have been subject to theft, vandalism, graffiti, trespassing on porches, balconies, and roofs, as uh, you heard from Mike, late night partying, intoxication. I've seen the uh, police deal with drug overdoses not 20 feet from my home. My wife will not stay here if I'm not in town, and she's not the only one. This is not the, you know, the happy Cal Capitola village we all know and love, but sadly, it's, you know, part of our lives here at Venetian Court Residences. Um, currently, there is no real um, visible signage within the Venetian court. Um, there are the gate signs at the perimeter. Um, and so there's, you know, really been no way to inform the public about our own safety and security requirements. And we, we think if we can appropriately inform them, most people come through here are just awesome. And uh, we think they would comply. The, the benefits of the, the signage that we put together, it, it just helps people understand they're 100% welcome to walk through the, the patios and climb over the wall to the beach. Um, it advises them just like the beach, there's no smoking here. And, uh, and also like a lot of our city sidewalks and for the safety of our residents, their kids and their pets, 
The signage would also state there are no bikes, skateboards, scooters, and skating uh, allowed. Um, and finally, it explains to beachgoers that they should, you know, uh, make their way to the beach rather than um, gathering, obstructing, you know, our patios or the seawall, both for uh, our residents as well as, you know, others trying to trying to make their way to the beach. So, like I said at the beginning, you know, it's vital for us to draw people into town um, for the health of our business owners. And uh, as Mike mentioned, with social media and the BIA marketing efforts, which have been super good, uh, the influx has grown significantly over the last half dozen years, uh, with our private homes being one of the main attractions. And, you know, in some ways that's cool if we can manage it. Um, our application for the four sound signs around our homes is kind of our best attempt to balance you know, the ever-growing visitors to the village with our need for safety and security around our home. So uh, I probably went longer than three minutes. Um, sorry, but uh, thanks for your time this evening and consideration of our application and continued partnership on this. Okay, thank you, Mr. News. Before you leave, I, I do have a question. Sure, uh, please. It's my understanding that the 70 police calls have originated from only one or two residents. Can you confirm that? Is that accurate? That is not accurate. It, it comes from a variety of, of uh, 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 locations. If you look on the police report, you can see it's anything from, uh, you know, kind of traffic altercations and, and uh, um, um, uh, residents who've complained about, you know, public drunkenness and the like. So it's, it's all over the map and it's really kind of our uh, little community here. Uh, not from a single location. Okay, and just I have one other question. Yeah, uh, the majority of those places down there serve as summer rentals. Um, um, mm -hmm. You know, typically they set up their gear on the walkway. They set up their chairs. They might set yeah. up a little barbecue. Yeah. Uh, so the Venetian Court Homeowners Association and the owners of those summer rentals want to prohibit that kind of activity. No, the, so those those are our patios, and so they're for use of the residents. Um, we coach the residents that they should not be blocking access to the beach because we've got to abide by that. Um, and so I've had to walk around, uh, you know, and kind of, you know, make sure people are uh, not um, getting too comfortable in uh, setting up their, their chairs on the patios and blocking, you know, people who are passing through and trying to get to the beach. Okay. How do you differentiate the walkway and the patio since it's all patio, one state? Yeah. The, the, the patio is kind of what is from our house to the seawall. And uh, we need to ensure that there is ample room for folks to pass uh, along the, the full length of the walkway. Um, you can uh, hop over the wall at any point, but um, it's, you know, I think it's in our best interest to make sure that folks can get to where they're trying to get to without any of those altercations that Mike mentioned. Okay. Uh, I think I disagree with you on that point that the walk, the entire walkway is your patio. So, are there any um, other questions for Mr. News? If not, then Mr. News, thank you. We're going to, Continue the public portion here, see if there's anybody else wishing to speak. Do we have any other people wishing to make comments, uh, Sean or Katie? I do not see any more hands raised in Zoom, and I'm gonna check the public email again. And there are no new comments on public email. Okay, thank you, Katie. Okay, with that, we'll bring it back to the commission and for discussion. Uh, who would care to lead off? Hi, this is Commissioner Westland. I will if no one else wants to go first. Go ahead, Susan. Um, uh, I agree with you that uh, I don't think the walkway is a patio area. Uh, I think the walkway and the wall have always been used by the public quite freely to get access to the beach. And I would be supportive of their sign plan and proposals if we made a couple minor word modifications. And uh, on their proposal where they say, do not sit, stop, loiter, or obstruct patio slash wall, 
I think the patio slash wall should be stricken and just say the pathway uh, because I don't think we want to uh, create the impression that the walkway itself is actually pri people's private patios. So I would vote for it if we could make that minor word change. Other comments? Courtney, is that your hand up? No. <laughs> Okay, no other comments. I'll, I have a comment. And one of the things in looking at the staff report, the Coastal Commission's recommended language is slightly different than the applicant's proposal. And the Coastal Commission doesn't include the seawall. And you know, I've lived in this town getting closer to 60 years now. Sitting on that seawall has always been something people have been allowed to do. So. I would certainly not vote for this if we prohibited people sitting on the seawall. I can give you an example of how this can be abused is that my son and two granddaughters ages 10 and 12 at the time, in the winter time, sat on the seawall and were asked to move with nobody else around. So I think if we include that in there, this this language can definitely be abused and I, th I think it can be utilized to discourage people from using that walkway and sitting on the seawall. So without that change, I definitely can't support this sign program. Okay, so could you sort of repeat the language that you want, you want to have? I think the Coastal Commission language in the staff report is sufficient. It doesn't mention anything about prohibiting sitting on the seawall. That that would work for me. The Coastal Commission's language. Any Mr. Other Wilk, I'd be very interested to hear uh, Mr. Nunez's response to that change to see if he has any rational argument against it. Is there a consensus to open up the public portion again? Doesn't I know, like yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Susan, would you like to try a motion? Uh, yeah, I, I will make a motion that we approve the sign program, but use the language suggested by the Coastal Commission. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion. To approve it with the language that's been suggested in the staff report by the Coastal Commission. We have the roll call, please, Chloe. Yes. Counts Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Well, I um, I am recused again, but in this case, it's not because I lived in Unit 21 at one time. That was be <laughs> that was before social media, and I think it was before there was any media. <laughs> Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. And Chair Root. Aye. Okay, motion carries with that amended language then. Okay, that brings us to item C, which is the outdoor dining ordinance. So tonight, uh, we do have a Katie's presentation. Katie has proposed several questions within her uh, proposal and probably best if we take those questions after she gives her presentation and we hear from the public and then we can respond to those questions that she's proposed in her written uh, uh, presentation to us. So, Katie? Thank you, Chair Ruth. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yes, I'm going to go over the presentation and there are quite a few questions. Um, so I, I appreciate that we'll get our public comment in first and then return to those questions. Um, so tonight we're looking at a draft ordinance for outdoor dining. I do want to mention that you've received quite a few emails today that I understand all the planning commissioners received in advance and were able to read through. Okay, quick history here. In spring of 2020, the City Council emergency order went into effect, which permitted temporary COVID-19 outdoor use permits, and that's what's continuing to happen 
um, through, those are um, set to um, expire on January 3rd, 2022. Um, last April, the City Council directed staff to develop a program for a permanent outdoor dining program. On June 24th, of this year, the City Council reviewed survey results from both the public and the businesses within the village. I included that in your packet tonight. Um, in, in those results, we saw there was uh, public support for um, a permanent program. There was support from not only um, a lot of uh, Capitola residents, but as well as many village residents. Um, and there was also uh, feedback from the businesses that they would like to, some of the businesses that they would like to be involved in a future program. So taking in that information on July 22nd, the council provided direction on some key program elements. And um, the, the first time planning commission got to review this, we, we published a draft ordinance in early October and the planning commission took their first review of this on October 7th at that hearing Planning Commission was very clear that they would like staff to put out more notice than is required for your typical ordinance. So we, at that point, we mailed out postcards to every resident within the Central Village Zoning District. And we placed public notices around the village and on the majority of the existing outdoor dining. And I think it's been effective because whenever I walk through the village, I seem to get a comment or two from businesses. So. Um, and the Planning Commission continued this to tonight. Or, um, tonight I'm going to go over the ordinance, uh, the major changes that have taken place since we first visit, looked at this in October. I will try to be quick because there's quite a few items uh, attached to this. So the first is the location. Um, there's both sidewalk dining proposed in the ordinance as well as a street dining decks. The sidewalk dining is limited in the mixed-use neighborhood zone, mixed-use village zone, community commercial, and um, regional commercial. Within the mixed-use village, currently the streets are limited to Monterey Avenue and Capitola Wharf. And this evening, I'll be looking for direction to see if you would like to modify the proposed location for the sidewalk dining to include any other streets or areas. Um, second is the location of the street dining decks. The street dining decks are only allowed within the mixed-use village. Um, to be clear, uh, dining decks within private plazas and private property could come forward, but they would have to be through a conditional, an amendment to their conditional use permit. So only um, within the public streets are they allowed in the mixed-use village. And the streets are limited to Esplanade, Monterey Avenue, and San Jose Avenue. And uh, originally the ordinance included Capitola Avenue and at our last meeting, the Planning Commission, um, it was suggested to remove Capitola Avenue. Right now we have that struck, struck through. And I just wanted to be clear, um, there was some public comment made about Lawn Way. And that is correct that that is in our uh, village residential overlay and it was uh, we allowed that under the COVID temporary use permit. That would not be allowed as this ordinance is drafted today. The lawnway area would not be allowed as a right of way. It is right of way and it would not be allowed for use for outdoor dining. Um, for the maximum number of on street parking spaces, there is a cap of 25 spaces. And I just wanted to introduce this, the idea of the prototype design for anyone that's listening in for the first time tonight. Mm -hmm. um, the City Council, during the earlier review, uh, we talked about creating a prototype that will work with an, a local architect, designer, and create an, a prototype that's been vetted by the city and paid for by the city that once um, uh, the Planning Commission would approve this design and we'd bring it forth for uh, preliminary review to get comments from the Planning Commission and eventually have a, a blanket um, coastal development permit for the prototype design. But it would be available, once it's approved, it would be available to any business that opts into the outdoor dining 
program to utilize and with the um, the intent here is to save the businesses money and as well as uh, create a very nice design that will fit within our community. So, and anyone opting into the prototype design, the, it would be an administrative review rather than a planning commission review for a custom design deck. So that's what the prototype design and explanation of it, because I do talk about it quite frequently. Um, so in this first slide here, the administrative permit would be for prototype street dining decks. It would not have to go before planning commission. It would fit under this blanket coastal commission permit. Um, a design permit would be required um, for sidewalk dining areas and also custom street dining decks. And one question I had uh, during the last meeting, the planning commission made the change of uh, the sidewalk dining areas um, who are directed should be included under uh, require planning commission review. And I wanted some feedback <laughs> this evening if that is only in the mixed use village or would you uh, allow sidewalk dining areas to be approved administratively in say the community commercial zoning district um, or mixed use neighborhood. So I'll be asking that later. Um, and as I just explained within the prototype design there is uh, in talking with the um, Coastal Commission, they would support a blanket coastal development permit for those. So once the design is created, we would bring this um, to the Planning Commission for approval of a coastal development permit, and it would be applied to all properties in the coastal zone, um, and any restaurant could opt to utilize the prototype design and move forward with the building permit application. Another modification we made to the code since October was um, we were given feedback that the fourth requirement for a design permit um, to use high quality durable materials that can withstand inclement weather uh, was very subjective and uh, there was a preference to have more objective standards. So we added a new uh, criteria for um, within the design that says allowed materials include finished or painted wood, glass, ornamental steel or iron, and decorative masonry, street dining decks where the primary visible material is plastic, fabric, woven bamboo, or chain link wire fencing are not allowed. So I'll be looking for direction on that this evening and if there are any other materials you would like to specifically allow or prohibit. Next, within the ordinance, there's a requirement for good standing. And so anyone that wants to opt into this, uh, we would do a, uh, some research and make sure that there have been no code violations or abatement issues in the last 24 months. And um, another item you'll see within the draft ordinance is that there is a, a use, there, um, for the permit fees in the coastal zone, the ordinance states that for sidewalk dining and street dining decks in the coastal zone, the city shall utilize no less than 50% of permit fees received for coastal access programs, maintenance, and improvements. So those fees that come in for utilizing the uh, parking spaces, 50% of those fees will have to be um, programmed towards coastal access programs, maintenance, and improvements. That was a request from the Coastal Commission. And now I'm going to go over our operational and, and operational and development standards. There were quite a few requests for modifications and additional items within this when we met in October. So these first uh, items have been here since October. The minimum sidewalk width um, for the uh, sidewalk dining is five feet throughout the village and then four feet in other zoning districts. There's a limit on the location to the eating establishment frontage. And then if they want to extend beyond that frontage, it has to be approved by the permit grantor. Um, and then a program is it's limited to eating establishments. So only eating establishments could opt in. And then there's a maximum hours of operation are from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, some changes that have happened, so standards for sidewalk dining areas. We limited the area to tables and chairs, 
and then also stated that design elements that are required for ABC permits to comply with the separation, such as fences, ropes, and planters, may be included in the design, but shall not exceed 36 inches in height. Signs, previously we just, in the first draft of the ordinance, we had a reference to our sign section of the code, and we were asked for more specificity. We added an allowance for one informational sign that could be up to two square feet. You see quite a few of these on the existing temporary decks that are out there, and this would be limited to two square feet and must be informational with a message such as watch your step or for paying customers only, and we're looking for feedback on that tonight. Storm water, this is a new standard that we added, that the dining deck shall not block the drainage flow along the gutter line or access into any drainage inlet or other drainage storm water facility. For utilities, the updated ordinance requires that the outdoor dining not interfere with utility boxes, water hydrants, storm drains, and all other related facilities. There's new standards for trash and maintenance, that trash is picked up and properly disposed of, flower boxes and planters contain live, healthy vegetation, and that all tables, chairs, and equipment and structures are kept clean and operational. Sound, we were given direction at the last meeting. In the prior draft, we said that it prohibited amplified sound, including amplified music. It's been updated to prohibit amplified sound and all music. And then for bicycle parking, there was quite a bit of discussion on that during the October meeting. Right now, as drafted, the ordinance requires two bicycle parking spaces for each parking space that is removed. And then the updated ordinance includes an alternative to pay an in-lieu fee towards a central bicycle parking location in the village. We're extremely limited in areas for bicycle parking in the village, so if we were to create this in-lieu fee, it would likely be going towards the removal of a couple more parking spaces to create space for bicycle parking, because we are that limited in our opportunities within the village. So I'll be asking for direction from the Planning Commission tonight if they would support an in-lieu fee towards a central bicycle parking location within the village. And activation, we added a new standard for outdoor dining shall be open for use a minimum of five days a week, except in cases of inclement weather. So that's just to make sure that the spaces are activated midweek and not just limited to the weekend. And we also modified the enforcement. We really want to make sure that enforcement can be done expediently. And so we modified this, that it would be subject to the lease agreement and the encroachment agreement. And that way we can work through our administrative policy and first give warnings, then tack on fees, and then have the ability to revoke and encroach the lease and revocable encroachment permit. The Coastal Commission has reviewed our ordinance and has given us, they provided red lines, which are in the draft ordinance. They asked us to reduce the amount of spaces from what was originally under the COVID-19 permit, which we've done with the 25. Originally we had more than 50 spaces used for the temporary permit. They requested that the program be temporary so that we can do a review within one to five years to make sure that the program is operating within our local coastal program. And then they also, as I mentioned previously, asked that funds from this program, from parking spaces, be utilized towards reinvested into coastal access. So that concludes all the overview and the changes that have taken place. So at this evening's meeting, we're looking for a Planning Commission recommendation. The next step, if we get a recommendation this evening to move forward, I will take this to City Council for a first reading on November 23rd, followed by a second reading on December 9th. And then we would submit the ordinance to the Coastal Commission in December. It takes a couple weeks to put everything together. And they get 60 working days in which to take this to a hearing and for final action. 
So I would think that, that if, if all goes perfectly, we get that approval by March. Um, and then concurrently, while we're moving forward with the ordinance, we'd be working on our prototype design. Right now we have two architects putting together proposals for us. Um, and I think the, that we could have something in front of the Planning Commission possibly in January, but definitely by February. Um, and then for the first review of an informal draft. And then once we have um, our Coastal Commission adoption of the ordinance, we could move forward with the blanket coastal development permit review of a design uh, by the Planning Commission. And then once we have that blanket CDP, we could post the lottery for spaces. So, um, so also published along with the ordinance was our administrative policy. So because this is on the dining decks and uh, sidewalk dining areas are on city property, there's administration that goes along with that in terms of the lease and um, how, how we will uh, manage that right of way. So our administrative policy really provides the guidance for that. Um, I won't go over everything in the administrative policy. I just tried to highlight what is different or, or just those items that are not within the ordinance. So the size limitation of uh, five parking spaces or 900 square feet per restaurant that outlines the process for the lottery. And it also has the details of the revocable encroachment permit, including the deposits, the insurance, no subletting. I think that was a question that came up last time. Uh, violations, fines, revocation, and construction timing. So with that, uh, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission review the draft ordinance and recommend approval of the ordinance to the City Council as amended. And I'm available for any questions. Okay, thank you, Katie. Are there any questions for Katie at this time? I did. I had a question. Yeah. Commissioner Newman? Yes. Um, when I was reading the ordinance, uh, one section I noted that you haven't mentioned and I wanted to learn a little more about it was the 17.96.175 uh, that's titled Outdoor Dining on Private Property. And it's not clear to me, first of all, and that's with a conditional use permit. So first of all, is that in any particular geographical area? Is it throughout the city of Capitola? or what? Yes, so that is uh, throughout the city of Capitola. Most, um, I think all restaurants within Capitola have to get a conditional use permit in all zones. So it would be, um, well not in all zones, in all commercial and mixed use zones. So it would be applicable to our commercial and mixed use zones where um, commercial is allowed. We created, can you see the screen? On the screen, the ordinance? Right. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so this 1796.175 is, um, so it, it would be an, an amendment to their conditional use permit. So um, any restaurant in Capitola that is in a shopping center or anywhere in a, where they have uh, a parking lot or private property can expand into that with a conditional use permit. Do they have to have any parking to support the additional tables? So, um, the prior, uh, so we do have an exception for outdoor dining decks within our parking ordinance. We do not have an exception for outdoor dining on private property uh, with that in our ordinance. But however, the governor did just pass a new law that um, a city cannot, and I think it's I think it's effective for three years, that a city cannot require parking for outdoor dining. So uh, for the next three years, if someone were to come in for an outdoor dining permit on private property, we would not be allowed to require parking. So what are the criteria for a conditional use permit? So I'll, I'll take, for example, 405 Capitol Avenue, which was approved uh, with no parking, and now they, they have property on which they can put outdoor dining. So the criteria tied to this would be uh, all of the criteria within a conditional use permit, um, of which I, I believe there's 
I want to say about 18 criteria. Well, more on this later, but it seems to me that this ordinance, I mean, especially with that provision in there, this ordinance just uh, blows up our, our complete commercial parking uh, rules. And we ought to, if we're going to do this, we should just do away with commercial parking rules completely. Um, what, one suggestion I could make in reference to this is that um, the way that this is worded, I definitely think it could be applied toward um, any area within a private property. And we could specify that it cannot displace parking if, if that were the what? will of the commission within the 1796175. Let's take, for example, the cookhouse at, mm -hmm. I think, 7-Eleven Capitol Avenue. So they were approved, and there's a certain number of parking spaces mm -hmm. in that shopping center uh, based on the square footage for different uses, et cetera. And now they put, uh, and it started with COVID, which I understood, but now uh, post-COVID, which we may be in soon, they're, they have a dozen tables or so outside the building, which probably triples their capacity. And there's no addition, there's no additional parking requirements. So that shopping center is now, you know, completely. Uh, it, it just makes a uh, complete mockery of our uh, parking ordinance. So I don't know. I mean, I didn't notice that so much when this came up the first time till I noticed this provision for uh, outdoor dining on private property. I do think, uh, I, I definitely hear what you're saying in the new um, standards that are by the state, we really don't have control over, but the, if you wanted to control not displacing parking within this section for outdoor dining and not allowing it within the parking areas, I think that is something we could amend into this section. However, if, if in the same example, the cookhouse were to put their outdoor dining in the front setback, I hear your point that they've just um, intensified the use without providing parking in the parking lot, which... You know, we've denied uh, expansion of restaurants for lack of parking. I mean, uh, all that should just be thrown out if, uh, you know, if, if we're going this direction. It just doesn't make any sense to say you can't expand the interior of your restaurant that you can, because you don't have parking, but people can add all kinds of tables all over the place with no parking. Anyway. It's, it's almost a catch-22. It doesn't sound like there's an easy solution to that one. Is the state law, has that taken effect or it's going to take effect? Um, I believe it. I can check on that. Can yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll, well, well, when we get to discussion, I don't want to take up too much time. When we get to discussion, I'll, um, I'll uh, have some thoughts on where to go with this. Thank you, Ed. I just have one question, Katie, about uh, sidewalk dining, where the sidewalk has to be five feet wide or I believe in outside the village has to be four foot wide. We don't mention how much of that sidewalk has to be unobstructed. Um, are we just leaving that up to the, to the restaurant owners? Or are we going to have a provision in that ordinance that says two feet, three feet, whatever has to be unobstructed for people to get by? That, that is the area that has to be unobstructed, the five feet unobstructed in the village. Okay. Okay, I did. I must have read it wrong. Then. So I, I should make sure that it's worded correctly, though, because if it is, if that wasn't clear. Okay. Is that, so no does that apply to the wharf as well? Excuse me. Does that apply to the wharf as well? There's only you only need to walk around the wharf with five feet clearance. I believe so, but that can also change if you'd like. You can amend that. Um, yeah, that worried. is considered the village, yeah. You're worried about spreading out on the war. <laughs> okay, well, let's open the public portion. If there's anybody wishing to speak to this item. Um, do we have any hands raised, Katie or Sean? Yes, looks 
like we have three hands raised. And Sean, can you uh, lead the charges? Mr. Chairman, before we take public hearing, uh, can I make a comment? Certainly. Um, and I know we want to um, involve the public as much as we can in everything we do, but um, I noticed that a lot of our speakers are going on and on and on. Um, and the, most of the other hearings that I've I've seen, like before the Coastal Commission or other, they they do impose some kind of time limit on people, and I think uh, that would be good. Yeah, uh, we've done that when we have numerous speakers. When we only have one, I don't think we've done that. But uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. How about if you're the timer, and we'll give them a max of four minutes? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Our city clerk is prepared. She's got her timer ready, and um, for, she can do the timing. And you'll you'll hear a noise when the four minutes has come to a conclusion. Okay. Thank you. So, who's our first speaker tonight? Our first speaker is uh, Mike. I'm going to enable him to speak now. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me fine? Yes, we can. So I completely support the outdoor dining. I think it's been a fabulous uh, addition to the city of Capitola, and uh, I think it's really helped the merchants in a, in a hard time. And I think it provides a good experience for the for the visitors to come here. My only caveat is that we've taken up a lot of the parking spots that are available for people with a village permit and have done nothing that I'm aware of to add some spots where um, the village permits can park, uh, you know, since the others have been taken up. And I would just ask you to kind of consider the fact that of the impact that's made on parking for people with village permits um, with still completely, I support the outdoor dining and what it has done for the city of Capitola. Okay. Mike, would you care to identify yourself for the record? Sure. My name is Mike Newell. Um, okay. I, I live actually in the Venetians in number four most of the year, um, okay. which is where I'm at today. And, uh, yeah, that's who I am. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Newell. Okay. Who's next? We have English Ales Brewery. Okay. This, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go okay. ahead. I'm uh, old enough that I don't know how to on these contractions. I'm sorry. Um, anyhow, I'm, uh, from, uh, my name's Peter Blackwell. I'm from, uh, I have the, uh, tap room on 111, uh, Capitola Avenue. Thank you so much for, um, the earlier, uh, approval. Um, the, uh, outside seating was, probably a lifesaver for everybody, uh, particularly us because we were only there about uh, 17 days before we had to close down for COVID-19. Uh, but when we were able to uh, reopen, it was, uh, it was a boon to us. I understand um, the problems with parking, um, and I noticed that uh, Capitol Avenue has been taken off of your uh, um, proposal, and I'd like to request that you consider um, putting it back in. Um, we only take up uh, two parking spaces. That's the, the least of uh, any other uh, restaurant. Most of the others are five plus. Uh, we take up two where, um, where parallel parking, so we don't stick out on the road. There are cars that park on either end, so we're not really subject to passing traffic uh, causing any problems. I don't think it's been any, well, I know there have been no problems with us in the past uh, 19 months or so. Um, so I'd like to consider that, um, including us in that. And failing that, we have um, we have some uh, property in the front, part of a, it's private property, front of the building, um, left or right side of the door, whichever way you're looking at it, you're looking at from, the front, from the front to the right, and it's about uh, 14 by six, something like that. Um, if we can't have a parklet, perhaps uh, you would agree to allow us to uh, pave that piece and, and, and put some seating there. We won't. We don't encroach on uh, the sidewalk, and we wouldn't be encroaching on the 
on the road and consequently we wouldn't be taking up two parking spaces. So that would be the second option that I'd, I'd like you to consider. The first, of course, being to be able to continue with the two parking spaces. Okay, thank you, Mr. Blackwell. We can consider the first tonight, but we can't consider the second. You'll have to work with staff on that proposal. Okay, thank you. So, do we have another speaker uh, wishing to address this, Sean? Yes, we do. Our next speaker is Linda Smith. Oh. I've just unmuted Linda. Go ahead, Linda. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, um, first of all, hats off to staff for the comprehensive plan and the speed with which it's being processed. I think it's really going to make a difference for us in 2022, and you guys are doing a great job. I really appreciate most of the changes that were recommended by the Planning Commission in October, specifically the prohibition of all music, not just the amplified music. I also like the requirement to activate the space. Um, closed dining decks do not reflect well, and staffing issues can be overcome when people would prefer to sit outside, which I expect to continue, um, you know, a lot of a lot of days of the week in the right season. Um, I've organized my comments um, to the re requested direction, and so I'll number them. Um, number one, I encourage the commissioners to allow the sidewalk dining to continue on Cap Capitola Avenue. The reef dog table and chairs do not interfere with ample passage on the sidewalk. They facilitate the enjoyment of yet another unique dining experience, and they don't create a safety hazard. Um, I'd really love for, to see that continue. Two, I encourage the commissioners to allow the dining deck on Capitola Avenue to continue as well. As I've indicated before, I have experienced a definite slowing of traffic when the dining decks are present. So I've enjoyed the space at Capitola Ales, and I don't feel it's a safety hazard, but quite the contrary. Number three, to require a design permit to be processed through the Planning Commission for all sidewalk dining is concerning. Um, perhaps there's a simple definition that can be established as a guide so staff could approve administratively, um, especially for the examples that are on private property and the reef dog on on Capitola Avenue, which I've already said I'd like to see continue. Number four, I can encourage the commissioners to minimize the specific limits on materials further than are already stated. Um, you could add materials and that would be great, but I'm really hoping to have the prototype come out with available characterization because um, it's nice to see the difference in architecture. It's nice to see the difference on the street. Um, Business, the number five, business identification and informational signs can be very helpful and not invasive when implemented correctly. Perhaps there's a way to allow for both while um, limiting the size and the quantity so you avoid the clutter effect. Number six, an in lieu fee towards a central bicycle parking location is better than the clutter effect and the confusion of having each site have a bike rack. Um, and I, I'm thinking about one site has a bike rack that's not being used and another site's full or doesn't have a bike rack. And so somebody parks and then crosses property and you wind up with a whole problem you didn't, you didn't think about. Um, number seven, I've already indicated the requirement for activating the space is a really good add in my, in my view. And I'd just like to make one more comment about the, um, the platform requirement. And I think that a, a built platform may do a couple of, of bad things. It, it allows for um, a complication that doesn't really get you any benefit. And so I'm hoping that this prototype design will allow for characterization and maybe it's in the flexibility of material or in, in so they all don't look exactly the same. And thank you for listening and considering my comments and thank you most of all for making this a priority for Capitola. Thank you, Linda. Okay, we'll bring it back to the commission now. Is there anyone else, Sean? Yes, we, we do have another oh, comment. We have, we have one more, okay. I'm gonna enable Doug to speak now. Okay, cool, you guys hear me all right? Yes. Okay, cool, thank you very much, you guys, for uh, all this work you've done in this planning department and with uh, the hardest hit sector of our city, our service industry. I'll go right to the point. 
Of course, every restaurant and bar situation is different here, uh, but understand many took on debt that loads that still need to be repaid. Some property owners never gave breaks to back rents and we still owe them. Most of the service industry is suffering an unprecedented lack of employees. Adding outdoor dining doesn't add employees, like that last lady said. We need employees. It's hard to get the sales to attain these. Uh, so the service industry is in a serious recovery mode. We have a lot to make up to to survive. This is where we need your help. We need to recover. The outdoor dining is key to that recovery. That's why the governor passed SB 314. This recovery bill gives outdoor dining and to-go alcohol an extended period with no additional fees so the service industry can recover. In the spirit of SB 14, now is not the time for the city to seek more income from the service industry. Using SB 14 as an example, the city requested, the city should request fees, I'm sorry, Using SB 314 as an example, the city's requested fees for outdoor leases, permits, and rents should be temporarily waived. Now is not the time to try and fill the city's coffers. Now is the time to help us recover. Remember that with recovery will come more taxes payable to you, the city, especially in the de special district tax that goes right from the local businesses to the city's account. This increase in special district taxes will help the city recover from the estimated parking income losses. This increase in tax income could even possibly be more money paid to the city than the 25 parking spots that are being lost. I may need to do the math on that with me. Give us a chance to recover, you guys. Don't charge us with the, uh, the don't charge the hardest hit with permit fees, leases, and rent. Follow the example of the state and temporarily eliminate the fees. If they can do it at state level, we can do this locally too, you guys. We really appreciate your help in this. It's been an amazing challenge. We love doing business in this city. We would love to continue to do business in this city, but we do need your help. And we're willing to work with you, but you got to work with us on these fees. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Doug. We do have another hand raised. Okay. Is it a new speaker, Sean? I, I believe so. It, their name is A. Okay. enabled them to speak. Yes, hello. Um, my name is Eric Fawcett. I'm a, a resident of Capitola, been here for 40 years. I'm standing up in the middle of the road today, right in front of this steamroller that seems to be coming down the street. It's called a temporary outdoor dining ordinance. Um, I want to emphasize the, the temporary part of this thing. Um, I have seen and heard a lot of supposed information about what's going on here, and yet whenever I find myself looking at that information, I see that it represents something different. For example, we're talking about the, uh, the cost of those parking spots. For a year, the total cost for 29, not 25 parking spaces, as you seem to maintain. I walk around town, I count 29 parking spaces. We'll bring in a yearly revenue of $101,000. I understand also that the city is considering making a loan to one of these establishments of $130,000. And I'm wondering, where is all of this money going to come from to pay for the lost revenues, to help support the, the businesses? I'm 100% behind the temporary outdoor dining ordinance, but making it permanent without due process, and that includes probably allowing the city of Capitola to vote on this issue. The uh, Numbers are not adding up. Like I said, there are 29 parking spaces. All of your paperwork mentions a maximum of 25. And going into the survey and the, the questions and answers that were given there, I find that there's no real way to follow the numbers through that survey. Uh, for example, in question number two concerning the loss of parking. The graph shows that 
over 50% of the people are not concerned and that a few people are concerned, well, let me take those very same numbers and change them just slightly in their, their uh, labeling. We have 53.85% that are not concerned about the loss of parking, whereas we have 46.14% of people that are concerned to very concerned. And that represents to me pretty much with a survey with a margin for error that you have 50-50 on the support of this whole thing to begin with. Uh, the next thing being that I think this whole thing is being steamrolled right through the city of Capitola and the residents of Capitola and the residents are not being heard. Um, I'm going to urge you to delay any zoning changes until after the COVID crisis has been completed. At this point, COVID restrictions say we can all dine indoors now. And there is no call for additional outdoor dining. Is the city encouraging itself to support business or are they just simply passing out money for outdoor dining? And I, I think this whole thing needs to be revisited in a very real way and addressing the idea of it being temporary. Okay. Sir, your, your time is just about up. Can you wrap it up, please? Thank you. That's, that's as much as I have to say. I want to encourage you to delay the changes and reconsider this whole steamroller. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we'll bring it back to uh, the commissioner. Is there anyone else, Sean? There was, we have uh, some public comment to share that through the email. Okay. So, does it read aloud here? Are you supposed to read that? You know, I, I thought I'd do the read aloud, but it's not. Uh, Going. So I'll read it to you. Um, this is from Don Campbell. I would like to voice support for the permanent permanent use of parking spaces for outdoor dining. It makes a more pleasant experience for visitors and diners and is good for the business too. I also wish it could also include the outdoor seating for English Ales and Capitola Avenue as it does not disrupt the flow of traffic. Thanks for your consideration, Don Campbell, 402 Rosedale Court, Capitola. We have one more. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's a little too fast. <laughs> not quite sure how you control that. Um, there we go. At 117 Longway in the Capitola Village, please note our opposition to the use of parking spaces as extensions of existing restaurants. While we encourage this temporary measure as a great way for the restaurants to keep their businesses open during the pandemic, there seems to be no specific reason to make it permanent. The traffic in the village is already very congested as cars slowly circle around the narrow streets trying to find an available parking space. In order to park near their residence, village residents who do not have a parking space on their property must join the village visitors in the hunt for a space. There is no traffic control in the village and cars are often backed up and sit idling for up to 10 to 15 minutes. The hunt for parking space process is not only time consuming but usually futile, leaving residents to have to walk a quarter mile from the city parking lot with packages, groceries, luggage, etc. This is very difficult for many, especially for the elderly and disabled, and there are not enough handicapped spots in the village to accommodate them, and permanent elimination of more parking spaces will create greater difficulty. Other possible alternatives to using existing parking spaces, use the parking lot or indoor space as a work and tile for the San Jose restaurants instead of street spaces, 
Close off San Jose to resident permit parking only. Allow resident permit parking on Capitola Avenue and the beachfront spaces. Another very concerning issue is safety. It seems unnecessarily risky to see people in the street just a few feet from vehicles, especially with the number of establishments selling alcohol in the village. Also, while patrons are sitting in the park less, they are closely exposed to exhaust emissions from idling cars. We know that air quality is degraded by traffic congestion slash emissions, so logic would suggest that a car idling just a few feet from people eating would be quite harmful. Respectfully submitted, Beth Wilson Bandy, 117 Long Way, Capitola, CA. And that's the end. Okay, with that, then we'll close the public portion and bring it back to the commission. I know there are several questions we need to address for Katie. Uh, so before we take the questions, are there any comments or questions for Katie before she brings those questions to us? Nope. Okay, Katie, would you like to start with the questions? Yes. Um, I'm just going to share my screen again. Uh, the first question I have is for the sidewalk dining. Um, would the Planning Commission like to modify the proposed locations for sidewalk dining? As mentioned in the staff report on Capitola Avenue, uh, there's that existing sidewalk dining in front of Leaf Dog Deli that under the current draft, it would not be allowed. It's currently limited to Monterey Avenue and Capitola Ward. I'm a no. Um, I, I, I would be in favor, of, this is Commissioner Westman, of having sidewalk dining on Capitola Avenue since we're not going to have street dining on there and um, the applicant has to meet the requirement of keeping five foot clear uh, which will determine the locations where you can have the sidewalk dining or not so for me I would be in favor of um, having sidewalk dining on Capitola Avenue but no street dining Anyone else want to weigh in on this one? Oh, how, how can I ask how far that would go to, on Capitol Avenue, all the way to the freeway, or? Uh, we're talking about the village zoning district right now, is my understanding. Right. So it would, I believe, it would go up to where the trestle is, or maybe a little further. I can't remember where the line is. I believe it's a trestle. I would be a no with uh, Commissioner Ruth. I. I support Commissioner Ruth's position on that. Well, so this is Commissioner Wilk. I've got a question. Uh, is the wharf considered a sidewalk? And if so, uh, what are we doing about that clearance? Five feet? It's considered uh, right of way, and it has been included as an area which should be allowed to have sidewalk dining with five feet of clearance. So, for the wharf or anyone else who wants sidewalk dining, the way the ordinance is currently written, they would have to come to the Planning Commission and get a design review permit. And I'm assuming we have the ability to require a larger clear space than just the minimum five feet? Yeah, at the time that it comes to Planning Commission for a design permit, if there are special um, circumstances tied to it, you could um, increase that and I can make sure that that's clear within the ordinance as well. So am I incorrect in believing that sidewalk dining is just an administrative permit, that it doesn't come to the Planning Commission? No, we modified that in the updated ordinance, but oh. there, all sidewalk dining with, uh, throughout the city of Capitola is required to come before Planning Commission. Okay. So what's the, what's the consensus here, commissioners? Is it your desire um, to modify the locations or to leave them as they are? We have two people that want to leave them as they are. One that's proposing allowing sidewalk dining on Capitola Avenue. Um, Commissioner Will, Commissioner Courtney, would you like to weigh in? 
Go ahead, <laughs> Commissioner Wilk. Go for it. Well, my my tendency is, is to prohibit sidewalk dining uh, in general. I, I agree with the person who talked about steamrolling this thing in. Uh, there's one thing for have a, having a COVID uh, set of emergency requirements, but, you know, mm -hmm. we haven't had sidewalk dining new zoning code, you know, whatever. I don't know why we need to change our our zoning code to do anything than what's already there. I mean, they can always, the restaurant can come and ask for a variance, or they, but to just allow sidewalk dining, I, I'm kind of against the whole notion of sidewalk dining in terms of creating new ordinances to allow it. Okay, well, that's a whole different issue. Yeah. Uh, what do, you, well, what do you propose for this question? <laughs> well, it's, the question is, would the Planning Commission like to modify the proposed location for sidewalk dining? I guess my proposed location would be, yeah, zero. Okay. okay. And, and Commissioner Christensen? I concur with um, Commissioner Westman. I think that sidewalk dining could, on Capitol Avenue would be appropriate. This is Plus. Commissioner Westman. So, just a process question. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, I know that we're going through Katie's questions right now, but when we get to the end, you know, I'm very much with Commissioner Wilk in that I think we're going way too fast on all of this. Um, and so I'm hoping, you know, we're just going to answer these questions and then we'll have a time at the end to have other comments because. Or, or else my answers are going to be different. <laughs> I'd like to, I, I have further comment on this. As we <laughs> all. <laughs> yeah, as we, as, may I? Yeah, Commissioner Newman, go ahead. Oh, I'm trying to think of who along Capitola Avenue, other than the one photo we have, which I think his operation there is a very, it's a positive one, but I think it would be a mistake to use that as the prototype and expand from that to all of Capitola Avenue in the uh, CD district. And I'm trying to think of who that might apply to. And for example, on the other side of the street, there's a restaurant that would be uh, entitled to do sidewalk dining and you would have to walk in the street now to in order to walk down that side of Capitol Avenue because uh, there's very little room and so I think this this is all part of what people have been saying about it all going too fast I think we're just you know, we're creating a monster here um, and we're doing it without uh, enough uh, thoughtfulness and when we get to that other section that I brought up earlier, I'll, I'll expand a, a little more on that. So I, I think we need to just step back. I think we have to initiate some controls down there. I mean, I don't know how we let it proceed without engaging in some type of discussion and proposed ordinance or administrative procedures. We just we have an <laughs> so We don't expand it. <laughs> so Clearly, there is a consensus to not have sidewalk dining on Capitol Avenue. Correct. Okay. So we can Thank move on. Thank you, Susan. We'll move on to the next question. <laughs> okay. Next is, um, would you like any changes to the proposed street locations? Currently, it would, for the street dining deck, be the Esplanade, Monterey Avenue, and San Jose Avenue. We've removed Capitola Avenue from the ordinance. Any yeses to this question? Uh, I, I have a change I would like to put forth. I also have my hand raised. Okay. I, I don't think that we should, the only place on Monterey Avenue that we're really talking about having street dining uh, is at the bridge. And I don't mean to single out one particular business, but that area right there is the most congested part of Capitola Village. It's where everyone goes to drop off their children, their surfboards, or whatever to the beach. And 
for me, I think we should eliminate Monterey Avenue. I don't think we should we should have it in that particular location. And that particular restaurant already has outdoor dining on other city property. Yeah, I was going to say there's there's a valid argument for that since they already have outdoor dining. Yeah. So I, I would like to comment on this as well, Mr. Wolf. Okay. So I also agree with uh, Commissioner Westman, but I'd, I'd like to go further in the sense that I, I think the notion of going through this paragraph by paragraph, going through the zoning code uh, is, is a recipe for disaster. Uh, and I think a way to avoid that disaster is to just specify the particular parking spaces that we are going to allow outdoor dining. We're talking about 25 spaces. That's been the edict from the city council that's come down. And there have been a lot of comments as to why certain areas should be eliminated. And I, I sent out a letter I, to the planning commission and everyone that basically puts my argument together that says we could specify a set of parking spaces uh, along San Jose Avenue and along the Esplanade, and I can go into details of the explanation and re reiterate my letter, but I think that's what we should go. I'd like to know if there's I have any support from the rest of the commissioners as to not doing a lottery system uh, or having businesses apply helter-skelter, but we say this: these are the zones, these are the spaces that are going to be allowed uh, for parklets and none other. And furthermore, uh, once we do that, we could even say, whether you rent these out or not, these are parklets. And if you're not going to rent them out, we can turn them into, like Commissioner Westman said, oh, a parklet is something that has public access. So if they're not rented out, we could hit, we could turn them into, you know, public art exhibitions, put benches in there, permanent landscape, you know, allow sidewalk vendors. Maybe that's where you put your bike, bike racks if they're not rented out. So I think we should specify the parklets, and, and that would simplify a lot of it. So do I have any support in that going down that path? I can, I can, I've got two pages of notes as to why I think it makes sense, but <laughs> if I don't have any support, I'll shut up. Well, for me, uh, I could support that, but I think there's something else that needs to happen first. And that is, you know, everything wraps around this prototype design uh, and how it's going to work in diagonal parking spaces and parallel parking spaces. And until we have that design, we don't know what they're going to look like, how they're going to work in the parking spaces. The restaurant people don't know how much it's going to cost to construct them. Are there going to be decks or they're not going to be decks? So, I think we've sort of got the cart before the horse. We need to, to step back and figure out what kind of, you know, configuration is going to be used in these prototypes because it'll be different from the diagonal and the parallel parking before we can make a lot of other decisions. You know, it, whether it gets the signage, bicycle parking, all of those things, it all depends on how this prototype works out. And then when we had the prototype, we'd know where they were going to go and what spaces they were going to use. Well, can I suggest that maybe we can get the Art and Cultural Commission involved in the prototype because they've got a big fat budget and they can do a call to artists and, um, and they're always having trouble getting anything they do approved. So this might be something that would get them fired up and we can get some prototypes out of them. Well, I'd like to add that you know, this is the direction the council going. We don't have a choice to change the direction right now. And if we want to change the choice, then there's no point in continuing this meeting at all because we're just spinning our wheels. But this is the direction the council is going. This is what we've been instructed to do by the council. So we either proceed or we don't proceed and just pass it on to the council the way it is. Let them and we are proceeding. We are proceeding. The only question is would we like to modify the proposed street dining low debt locations? And I'm saying yes, yeah, we can specify them very specifically. Like spotlight. Okay. 
So I'd like to respond to that, Commissioner Ruth. But so the council makes policy decisions like this. The only reason that it's coming to the planning commission is because they don't deal with applications on a day-to-day basis like we do. And so they want input from the planning commission based on the fact that we have maybe a little more experience in dealing with applications, conditional use permits. And they get some, but we get them all the time. And so I think that the feedback and what I'm hearing here, the more I hear, the more I'm convinced that this is just an exercise in chaos right now. And I think that's the message that I'll go back to the council, that a short-term temporary extension of whatever they've got going now would help the businesses. And we need a lot of time to think this thing through, think through its parking implications, all sorts of aspects of it. Okay. Mr. Newman, I don't disagree with you. I was responding to Mr. Wilk's request or suggestion that we just designate 25 parking spaces. That's a totally different direction. And that is not the direction we're going right now. But it's logical, and that's why we need to spend more time thinking about this. Well, I agree with Commissioner Newman and what he said. And, you know, I think we should go to the council because they can easily extend the temporary program that we have in place right now so the businesses won't suffer while we take time to work through all of these issues. Okay. Well, for the rest of this meeting, what would you care to do? Do you want to pursue these questions or stop here and send that query to the council that it needs to continue the temporary program to allow more time for this to be figured out? What's the place? Maybe you could recommend that they put together a, like they have a parking commission once upon a time. They could put together a park left commission and have a series of commissioners and councilmen and public volunteers to sit on that committee and come up with several options. Katie, what do you need? Well, I actually, after our last hearing on October, and I heard the concerns coming up of the commissioners of this being going so fast. I brought it up to our city attorney and asked for some advice on this matter. And she provided me with some clarity that, you know, for this evening, it would be really great to get feedback on the ordinance as drafted. But in your motion to make a recommendation to the city council to delay adoption until, and then you could specify what that is. I know Commissioner Westman brought up delaying adoption of the ordinance until the city has a prototype design in place or until, you know, just if we need more time, it's something I can bring back to them just to, that we can, and they're actually looking at the continuance of the outdoor dining program at their meeting next week for the temporary. So that could, I could bring that to them. Let's put that actually in their staff report tomorrow at the planning commission this evening. If you would like them to extend the temporary outdoor dining in order to create more time to work on this ordinance. But I think tonight, if we can get, if I can get feedback on those items that you're ready to give feedback on, that would be great. But I think the recommendation can be to planning commission to the city council to delay the adoption. Okay. Let's, let's plow through the questions without a lot of bird walks here and see if we can get them done. Okay. So for the, for the locations, I'm hearing, I just hear two, two commissioners in favor of removing Monterey Avenue. And also I can support removing Monterey Avenue. That's three. That would be three. Okay. Okay. Next question. Next question is the permit review process. During the last meeting, the planning commission asked that we add sidewalk dining areas to the requirements for a design permit given to the planning commission. I just want to make sure that I understand that. Are you saying that the city council 
wanted to ask, is that only within the village, or would you like all um, sidewalk dining areas on the public sidewalk to come before planning commission? Okay, so what is or all? Wait, so this there enacting sidewalk dining throughout Capitola? Yes. And I think what I heard from the first discussion is maybe we should consider removing sidewalk dining altogether from this ordinance. Is that? Um, there, there was definitely I, I, I could go for removing sidewalk dining from this ordinance. I think it should be a separate ordinance not included in the street dining program. I agree. I would agree. Okay, next question. So, are there the specified materials we, we were asked, we were asked to create some more objective standards for the so for the outdoor dining deck, for the street dining deck, the amount of materials include finished or painted wood, glass, ornamental steel or iron, and decorative masonry. Street dining decks where the primary visible material is plastic, fabric, woven bamboo, or chain link wire and fencing is not allowed. So these are the design permit findings for the custom deck or for the prototype deck? This is for, um, I think it applies to all as the standard of, of within the, um, one of the standards for a dining deck, but within a prototype design it would already, like our prototype designs would have to follow this, but it will already Okay, so this is a yes or no. Yes. Can there be added a uh, wooden lattice <laughs> to those omitted or things that aren't allowed? <laughs> Good point. Yeah, so that makes that the yes. Yeah. Mine's the yes. Okay, with, with adding that uh, wooden lattice is prohibited. No, it's the yes is to there. Would you yeah. like to specifically allow or prohibit other materials? We can't get into each yeah. material. But yeah. specifically, don't we have to identify them? That's where the prototype comes in. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say so it's a no. So we had yeah. the same thing on the ADU, right? We had the special consultant come in and he gave us all the different ADU things and talked about materials and there was some material board. In the end, we actually had something to review, not just a, a question thrown out, thrown at us cold. I would well, like this to is, This is applicable to all, uh, the, the ADU is the, uh, I'm sorry, the prototype dining deck will be reviewed by the planning commission as within the Council Development Permit. Any of the <laughs> custom designs that come in, we've created these new standards. Um, I think we should let the designer let the designers decide what they want to do. We don't need to design them. Well, but this is our this is our public space. I would think, my opinion, is that this design should be driven by the city since it's our space. And there should be some uniformity. It shouldn't be helter skelter. There should be uh, some consistency and some you know city beautification efforts. Not just this restaurant has bamboo and because it's Thai, Taiwanese and that one has a Western thing. We should this should be parking. These should be spaces that we allow restaurants to use. Are, are you qualified to determine what materials should be allowed, which ones shouldn't? I'm not. I I think nothing should be allowed other than what's allowed in the prototype design and I'm way to get that design on fire and that list of materials. I would be happy with this if we just said uh, examples of materials that, you know, could be used are, you know, finished painted wood. The city would discourage, you know, the plastic fabric woven bamboo or chain link fence. That way it's open. Okay. It's Agree with Susan? Well, Pretty much what it says right now. Okay, next question. Okay. Signs, would you like 
to allow one informational sign um, with the standard we created to limit two square feet and limit it to two square feet in size, and that the sign must be informational. I think there should be a restaurant sign with their name and a sign for their menu. Agreed. I agree. I'm fine with that. Okay. Is there a sign on that? Overriding objection to the ordinance. <laughs> I, I think the size ought to be determined by what the prototype's going to look at and where the signs can go. Yep. Yeah. All right. Public decision. Okay. Next question. Okay. Bicycle parking. Uh, currently, we require two bicycle parking spaces. We also added a new alternative. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. I'd like you to read the motion back because that was awfully 
for both, and I don't know what I'm voting. <laughs> okay, thank you. I apologize for not doing that earlier. So the motion by Commissioner Newman, seconded by Commissioner Westman, says pro that you provided feedback as indicated during this meeting to the um, community development director and recommend that council extend temporary dining for an additional period of time and not make any permanent changes until there is sufficient time to fully evaluate a new ordinance and that the provision for outdoor dining on private property be completely separated from this ordinance on outdoor dining in the public space. Is there a continuance included in this motion? Continue to December? That was not said specifically. We have to amend, amend the motion. I don't think, uh, Chloe, did you mention uh, anything in there about the prototype design being developed first? I, I don't think that was in the motion. Oh, I thought that was good. Isn't the city council going to deal with this next week? No, council is reviewing the temporary program next week. Yeah. Well, I like them to, to they'll have the minutes at least for this for the outcome of this motion. City council is uh, scheduled to review the the ordinance. We were uh, thinking on November twenty third, so I, I will bring forward recommendation but however the yeah for just a point of order the the continuance of um, the temporary program that's tied to an emergency order and they will be reviewing that next week that's not really tied to the long-term ordinance so it is the, the recommendation that's being made is tying this you know uh, isn't really tied to what you have before you and uh, we can bring that to the, the city council definitely and we put that in the staff report tomorrow that was discussed at this hearing but in terms of taking action on what's in front of you um, it would be good to get clarity on exactly what you would like us to achieve this ordinance wouldn't affect you or um, in your recommendation so I think that depends on what the city council does with the extending the temporary ordinance. If, if they extend it for a year, then we have uh, more time to deal with it. Hey, Chloe, could we hear the motion one more time? Yes. Provide provided feedback as indicated during this meeting to the community development director recommend that council extend the temporary dining program for an additional period of time and not make any permanent changes until there is sufficient time to fully evaluate a new ordinance and the provision for outdoor dining on private property be separated from outdoor dining on public property. Okay, so we have a motion. Okay, friendly amendment. Okay, Mr. Wilkes. I would like to make a friendly amendment to include uh, in, in order to redo uh, the prototype design. There was a sentence in there that kind of explained why we wanted the continuance or not the continuance but the delay. And, and one of the reasons I think it is because we want to review the prototype design first. Including review the prototype design? Yes. That I would accept. I would okay. accept it as a second. Okay, where are the roll call, please? Yes, I'm going to start at the top if that's okay. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Newman. Aye. Commissioner Westman. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. Chair Root. Aye. Thank you. Okay, motion carries. Put that one to rest for tonight. <laughs> it will come back. <laughs> yes. And we'll move on to the director's report. Katie, do you have a report? Um, I, I, just, I just want to make sure of one thing. With, I know we have a motion passed. Were there, I, I know that uh, Commissioner Wilk had asked you to make an additional comment. I'm going to come so, back to him. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So for a director's report, I just want to let you know last city council meeting the new the updated inclusionary housing ordinance 
was adopted the second reading passed um, I don't have a presentation for you this evening but I promise to have one to you in the near future because I, I think it's interesting to the outcome that occurred there but there's new alternatives um, to housing development for make permit and that they can pay a higher annuity fee the annuity fee increased from ten dollars per square foot to twenty five dollars per square foot and that was study and I think it's going to create some great opportunities for the city in the future to be able to partner with nonprofits and hopefully be able to build more affordable housing locally. That's my direction to support the city. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Commissioner's communication. Mr. Will. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, register my concern about the ordinance not allowing any music whatsoever. Um, I can understand amplified music, but the notion of uh, not hearing a violin at a romantic dinner at Caruso's uh, seems to me like I'm missing out on something. Uh, perhaps a guitar or an accordion, if you like that kind of music. I just think acoustic music would be welcome and not be a noise uh, problem. I don't know if anybody else agrees, but that's my opinion. I'd like to report it. Now that you've done yours, I have one. Um, I do think that this program, however it gets adopted, is going to impact the residents trying to find places to live. So, uh, places to park, excuse me. And I think it would be nice for us to have some information about how many loading spaces can the residents use those loading spaces. Why are they not allowed to park on Capitol Avenue or, you know, on parking on the Esplanade? Seems like we need to do something if we want to keep the residential uses down there, and we probably want them since we have this residential overlay district. It doesn't long to become commercial anyway. So I would just like us to see when we talk about this again, have some consideration if there's something we could do to help out the residences down there. Okay. Any other communications? I think we're done.